Hi everyone. Before you skip to the next chapter, please just give me a couple moments of your time. I promise that this is important. On Thursday, March 14th, multiple tornadoes struck Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. One of the hardest hit areas was Lakeview, Ohio, which is, was basically demolished by an F3 tornado. I spent a lot of time at Indian Lake as a kid and the Lakeview area. My grandparents retired there and we spent so many weekends every holiday and at least a week every summer. I know I learned how to drive on my grandpa's speedboat and I found some of my favorite books at yard sales that my mom and I walked to every summer. While my relationship with my dad has since fallen apart, this is where my last good memories with him are and it's where my last memories of my grandpa are and just the good times that our family was able to have. This is where I learned to swim and it's where I learned to love history. It provided fodder for my imagination and to this day it still influences my writing. This is an area that is wholly dependent on tourism and right now there is just nothing left. The biggest business in the area, Spend a Day Marina, lost their showroom and had severe damage to their outbuildings. The rental dock is gone and every single boat they had in their inventory what that was in storage for winter has been damaged. Normally, they would be the first ones to step up and spearhead some kind of area recovery. They sponsor a lot of events in the area, but right now they can't. There are hundreds of people without homes. Most of the houses in this area are very small cottages that were built between 1930 and 1960, and they just sit on concrete blocks. When the tornado went through, it literally blew them away. As with many tourist-centered areas, the year-round residents are mostly low income. Lakeview and the surrounding areas were hit hard by the housing bubble and the 2008 recession, and to be honest, it has never fully recovered to what it was in the 90s or before. The average person makes between twenty dollars to $35,000 a year, and now they're missing restaurants, event spaces, shopping, laundry facilities, and so much more. To make matters even worse, for the last few years, they've been struggling with an invasive algae, which has made it unsafe to swim or boat in the lake, further impacting tourism. This is a community that was already struggling. There are only two grocery stores and a scant handful of gas stations, a single hardware store, two, maybe three pharmacies. Most people do their shopping at the Dollar General or drive miles to Walmart in the larger but equally struggling town of Bell Fountain. Three people died in this storm and about two dozen were taken to the hospital with injuries. The only reason the casualty list wasn't higher is because the season doesn't start until Memorial Day, so there weren't any out-of-towners around. The full the full time population is just over 1100 for the village of Lakeview and the adjoining villages of Midway and Russell's Point are even smaller. Four of my family members survived this storm. My mom is trying to cope with the trauma. My grandma couldn't go to the basement, so the two of them sheltered in a hallway until it was over. They got lucky. My grandma's house is brick. It was well built and it's got one of only a few basements in the area. They got through with just minor damage to the roof and a little bit of flooding in the basement. Meanwhile, at a nearby park, every tree was uprooted. Some of these trees were hundreds of years old, three or four stories tall, but hundreds of others were not so lucky. The community has come together to provide food, clothing, blankets, and water for those impacted. It could be a week or more before they get power and running water back on, and there are still so many who don't have a proper roof over their head. Local schools have been closed for use as temporary shelters and donation drop-off points. Currently, the United Way of Logan County is collecting monetary donations to help victims get back on their feet. It could be weeks or months before insurance funds come through. With supply shortages and the massive amount of damage, it might take even longer before some of them can start to rebuild. 
If you can spare a couple of bucks, please consider donating at the link down below. I'm not a large channel. I'm not expecting this campaign to be far reaching, but I would love it if you could share this video even if you weren't able to donate. I'd like to raise at least $500 for the relief fund to help everybody get back on their feet. I'm a small channel. I am 3,000 miles away from my family and there is nothing else I can do for them right now. So please help me to do this. Thank you. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Sheena Perrell. I am the author of 10 novels and I also design knitwear. Um, I hope that you were patient enough to sit through my little introduction there that will be appearing in front of all of my videos for at least a couple of weeks. And in this video, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so like I said, there was a major tornado in an area where I grew up. Um, my family was directly impacted by this, although they got off really lucky. So what I want to do is on top of doing a YouTube fundraiser, I'm going to go back to something that I do really well, which is knit. And I'm going to design a pattern and all the proceeds for it are going to go to the relief fund for the area. Now, because this is a time sensitive issue, I want to get the pattern up as quickly as possible. And I also want to get this video up as soon as possible. So what I'm doing is I was thinking about the different things that I could make and honestly the fastest one that I can get out there is going to be a hat. So that's what we're going with right now. Um, this is the Lake Effect hat and Lake Effect refers to the act of coming together when people at the lake are in trouble. This is something that this community does regularly and they have really pulled together in the last few days because of the damage. So I have a design in mind. I need to sit down and sketch it out, take some measurements. But this morning I went through my stash and found some yarn because I don't have time to order more. Um, and honestly, I don't have the money to go out and buy new yarn right now. I'm currently in between temp jobs. So this is what I have to work with. So the colors that make me think of the lake are sky blue, uh, dark green, specifically it, it's like a shade of a brownish olive green that the lake appears on most days. Um, prior to when I moved away, um, it was always this sort of dark murky green when you viewed from the surface. It has changed color since then because they have an invasive algae species that they're dealing with. Um, but the color that I remember, it's this very specific brown green and there's a lake smell. <laughs> if you've been to Indian Lake, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but that smell is just, it, it feels like home to me. So I went through my stash and I found a few colors that I'm going to use and I'm going to be holding these three together. This is two skeins of Knit Picks Capretta in the colorway Hemlock Heather and then one skein of Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in Atlantis Heather. And I'm holding these together because these are fingering weight and that is going to get me closer to the worsted weight of the rest of my yarn. And also I think that the way that these colors play together with the slightly different shades and the tweed is really going to add to the illusion of the lake water. And then I have my sky blue. This is uh, Barocco Vintage. I don't remember the colorway. This has been in my stash for a really long time. And then I just have some white yarn. Um, I think this is cotton or a cotton blend. I have no idea what brand or anything this is, but it's the right weight and I don't need a ton of it. So this should work. Um, so I have my colors. I think I've got enough of each color. Um, 
I might be a little bit short on the blue. I'm not positive. So what I'm going to do is pull out my knitting notebook. I'm going to take some measurements, do some sketches and figure out where to start. And probably for the rest of the video, we're going to be switching over to voiceover so that I can tell you a little bit more about the area and why this is so important to me. And I'll also be narrating what exactly I'm doing at each stage. So let's turn the camera around and get started. In 1840, a group of settlers stumbled across a small collection of lakes and wetlands that were perfect for hunting and fishing. Between 1850 and 57, Irish labor was brought in to connect the existing lakes to form the Lewiston Reservoir, which today feeds the Miami River. In the 1880s to 90s, the lake was expanded again and renamed Indian Lake after the many local tribes. Today, a lot of Native American names are preserved in the area. While it was a popular getaway in the early 1900s, in 1924, the Sandy Beach Amusement Park was constructed at Russell's Point on the south end of the lake. It included many rides, a dance hall, roller coaster, and attracted many popular musical acts of the day. With the train passing right through the area, it was an easy place to get to for a weekend away. The train in rural setting also made it perfect for the Chautauquas. This intellectual movement started in the 1870s in Chautauqua, New York, before spreading across the country and reaching its height in the 1920s. They purchased Orchard Island, which adjoins Russell's Point, built a hotel and housing for members, and hosted many speakers, musicians, and performers, as well as hosting social activities. While the group generally declined to take a specific political stance, it was very concerned with temperance, women's suffrage, and child labor. In general, Chautauquas would invite speakers from both sides of the fence to speak and then encourage their members to think critically and make their own decisions. Today, the road on and off the island preserves this heritage as Chautauqua Boulevard. The hotel was finally torn down in the early 2000s after sitting derelict for decades. Once, however, it was a huge draw with a roller rink, dance hall, and expansive views of the lake with waterside cottages for rent. Because Indian Lake was lower cost than Coney Island or other larger resorts, it managed to survive the Great Depression mostly intact and even through the hard times of World War II. The economic explosion of the 1950s, however, started to spell its downfall. As more people bought cars and were less dependent on the railroad, they began driving further away for their entertainment rather than to a local small town. In the 1960s, Sandy Beach began to fall into disrepair before finally closing in the 1970s. Today, the land on both sides of the bay has been repurposed, and you'll find a small park, a pharmacy, a fast food place, and some condos. But the old pedestrian bridge connecting the two remains a landmark in the area. This bridge is the inspiration for the design I'm working on today. Okay, so I have my measurements, I have my yarns. I have a loose sketch and I'm going to go over to my knitter's craft paper now, which I should probably print off more of this so that I can get the actual color work down here and make sure that it matches with my dimensions. I also do need to swatch and figure out how many stitches to the inch I'm getting. Um, I honestly prefer to do patterns based on measurements rather than stitch counts, but because this is color work, I'm going to have to fuss with it a little bit. So I'm going to go do that and we will check back in in a little bit. Hello, it is day two of working on my fundraiser hat. If my face looks funny, it's because I had a dentist appointment this morning and half of my face is still partially numb but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. I talked to my mom first thing this morning and in they at least have electricity and they're on well water, so that also means that they have water back. However, there is still a lot of concern about gas leaks in the area, so they don't have heat yet. Um, and this is a problem because while I was on the phone with her, they were getting whiteout conditions. <laughs> Um, they are being provided with electric heaters, but obviously with the risk of 
potential gas leaks, all the gas has been shut off for the island they live on right now. Um, but with using electric heaters for all of their heat, this does increase the fire risk for the few people who do still have homes. So this is still really dangerous. Um, she did say that they have power, they have water again in one of the houses. My aunt still doesn't have water yet, but um, they were able to do laundry. Um, she was able to bathe and wash her hair this morning. And while they can't use like the stove or anything like that, they do have things like coffee makers, kettles, microwaves that are all working. So they at least have access to hot water and they are able to cook things. They did lose everything that was in the fridge, but the freezers are okay. Um, so they do still have food. The volunteers have been really great about bringing them in food, water, batteries, anything like that that they need, for which I am really grateful. Um, so update on the hat. I was able to do the, um, the chart for the image last night. And that took a really long time. I ended up doing it in Excel because I didn't have any more uh, knitter's graph paper printed off. And because this was a color work chart, I'm just like, you know, it's going to be easier if I do it on the computer so that I can make changes and we'll keep it simple that way. And then I can print it off later. So currently I have a chart on the computer that I'm working from. And this is where I left off last night. So I have 12, 12 rows of ribbing and I'm currently working on plain stockinette. And let's see, I've got about six rows of plain stockinette done. And I believe the color work picks up around round 20 or so. So I'm on round 18. Um, so I need to double check my chart and figure out where I need to start working with the white yarn. But this is where we are right now. I'm really, really hoping that I can get the hat done today. So that way I can release this video and the pattern on Wednesday. Um, and I did want to note, if you are not a Ravelry user, I am now able to put all of my knitting patterns up onto my Ko-Fi shop. You know, my older patterns, like anything older, basically older than our move to Washington. Um, I currently can't put on Ko-Fi because there have been computer crashes between then and now, and I don't have the files for it anymore. But anything from about 2020 forward is now on the Ko-Fi shop and all of my patterns going forward, including this one, will be on Ko-Fi as well. So if you're not a Ravelry user, you are going to have alternative access to my patterns. You can also find my books and other things there, so feel free to check that out. It really goes a long way to helping me survive because, like I said, right now I am between temp jobs. Anyway, back to the knitting. I have a lot of work to do.
We made it. <laughs> I know it looks big on here. That's because um, my foam head is smaller than the average human um, because it doesn't have hair for the most part. Um, but the hat is done. I would put it on to show you, but it is still wet. It is still blocking. So um, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to take more photos and some video later on um, just to add to this video as well as to the pattern listings. I'm also planning on making a second one in two colors just so you can kind of get an idea of some of the different construction techniques that you can use on this. Um, so this pattern is written for an adult size. I believe it is 21 inches in circumference. I could be off on that, but it is eight inches from the crown to the brim. All the details are in the Ravelry page, which is live right now. And as soon as I'm done filming and posting this video, I'll be uploading it to my website along with a blog post about it, as well as to my Ko-Fi shop. And just for full transparency, if you purchase any of the patterns off of my website, those do come from Ravelry, but you are not on the Ravelry website when you make the purchase. You are on my website. So I um, need to get that done. Um, the latest update that I have is they released the names of the three people who passed away due to the tornado. Um, they were all elderly. Fortunately, they were not people that I knew. Um, this community is largely made up of retirees and older residents. There are some families and younger people who live there, but a good chunk of the people who live there have been living there for years and they retired to this area. So um, they also just got their internet service back at least the provider that my family is with, um, which is absolutely shocking because normally they can't be bothered to either even repave the road correctly in this area. But now they're saying that they should have gas up by the end of this week. So things are going really well right now, but there's still a lot of people in need, which is why this hat was created. So I am going to have um, anything that I make off of the sale of this pattern between now and May 31st is going to go directly to the United Way. Um, I'm not keeping any of it. There might be like some Ravelry fees or some uh, hosting fees that I have to pay through Kofi, but everything that comes to me is going to go right back out into the community for the disaster relief. Um, other than that, I don't think that there's a whole lot that I have to say at this point. I know that this was kind of a rushed video. I wasn't able to go into as much detail as I wanted to just because this was time sensitive. And in some cases I for, forewent, foregone, I didn't film <laughs> because I was trying to focus on getting things done as quickly as possible. I will leave links down below to the blog post, the Ravelry link, the Ko-Fi link, um, as well as the link to the United Way and also the Russell's Point, or I'm sorry, the Indian Lake Chamber of Commerce is also collecting donations. So I will leave links to all of that information down in the description below. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. And especially in this case, I would really appreciate it if you could comment, share, like, subscribe, interact with this video in some way, just so I can help elevate my reach and help raise more money for these people. Um, thank you so much. I will be back next week with my regular content. We're going to have another writing video next week. Um, and in the meantime, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and that you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with, even if they are making obnoxious noises in the background. Ciao.